Hey folks, David Stewart here. The Last Jedi, two years later, this time by the numbers. That means all of the categories that I like to talk about to average together and arrive at a final score determining the more objective quality of the movie. Just so you know, this converts into a percent and therefore a grade. So five and below is F, varying shades of failure, but there's a lot of variation in there, which is why the first five are all basically... You failed at what you're doing. So let's hop into it. I want to try to keep this video a little bit brief because a lot of this stuff I've talked about uh, before, even two years ago. So aesthetics, we're going to start with production, which I usually talk about a couple of different categories, anywhere between two to four categories. Let's start with aesthetics. This is the visual design for the most part. I give the aesthetics an eight out of 10. I think they are very well executed. They're very good looking. And in some cases of very extreme interest, however, they are very unoriginal. The entire movie is a, what I call a nightmare version of Empire Strikes Back. It's a copy of Empire Strikes Back's um, visual space without the high contrast photography that made Empire Strikes Back have the impact it had. This is still nonetheless very, very effective. It even uses the emotion color red. So there's uh, basically everything is very muted. There's very little color except for this color red, just like we had in Empire Strikes Back. This includes on the salt planet, the mineral planet where they're going over the white salt and when it flips up, it turns red. That's the, um, that's the contrast color. That's the color that he really emphasizes. The other color he emphasizes is the gold color. Now the gold color exists in the only original set piece that we have in the entire movie, which is the casino planet. However, the casino planet, I think, falls kind of flat. I don't think it's very interesting looking, and it doesn't really look very Star Wars-y to me. It really does look like a slightly futuristic Las Vegas, and that, uh, to me, looks not so from a galaxy far, far away. I think it's the least interesting set piece, and it's also the least interesting part of the story, concurrently, if you will. Um, there's a couple of other things that I think are worth talking about with the aesthetics. You have these porgs, these little intended to be cute puppets. I think they're the only instance in this movie that I can think of where the aesthetics are actually trying to poke fun at Star Wars and joke about things. He put in these annoying, cute characters just to sit there visually and uh, kind of make fun of Ewoks and things like that and the use of cuteness um, throughout the Star Wars movies. You even have a point where like Chewbacca's eating one of them. So I actually didn't appreciate the Porgs. I thought they looked stupid and their placement was also annoying. The aliens throughout look pretty decent, um, if I'm being honest. So overall, I think the aesthetics are well executed, but they are not original. If you actually look at the movie, it's just a it's just a copy of Empire Strikes Back. The ships are all from the original trilogy. Even the first orders of you know the visual design is just a copy of the original trilogy. And even the salt planet is just Hoth, but with a really cool color effect of things turning red when you go over the salt. It looks like Hoth. They're in trenches like in Hoth. So it's very much a copy of Empire Strikes Back. Next, let's talk about cinematography and effects. I don't always add this as a category, but I think this one's of note. I give this a 9 out of 10. I think this is the highest production value of the movie is where the photography is concerned. Photography is in some cases really beautiful. There are scenes where there's design elements incorporated into just character drama that are completely... Um, they completely work with the character drama and actually enhance it. There's a, a scene where Kylo Ren and Rey are um, having this moment after they like fight off all the red guards and there's like, you know, the everything's burning around them and it's just a really striking set of colors and scenes. So in general, the, the photography is really top notch. It doesn't have quite that high contrast punch that we had with Empire Strikes Back, but in general, the lighting is pretty pristine. Everything is crystal clear and very crisp. The effects are also good. Um, the special effects, the CG is pretty much good throughout. The only exception was, I think, those horse aliens. Um, they looked very fake, and they really kind of stood out to me. You could definitely see the seams. Something about how they moved, I think, in relation to the in relation to the background. I think having most of the things out in space kept the CG looking pretty pretty good and pretty crisp. Um, 
and there's a couple of choreography issues in the in the fight with all of the red guards. Uh, I don't really notice him if I'm watching him at speed. I know people have nitpicked and said that, you know they like CG uh, some weapon through an arm because of a choreography error. When you're watching it at speed, you don't notice most of those things, but there's a couple of little issues um, there. So I guess that maybe takes it down just a very slight notch. But overall, cinematography is pretty top notch. I think it's the best part of the movie actually. Sound design, I actually give the sound design an eight out of 10. It's a big improvement over Force Awakens, in my opinion. Everything has a much bigger punch. There's also a lot more sound interest. When we have like the cannons shoot on the Dreadnought, they really have this deep level punch and a unique sound we haven't heard before. The lightsabers all sound good. We can really hear Kylo Ren's lightsaber at times. It, it has a very interesting effect in general. And then there's a lot of use of silence that's very effective in quiet moments. Even um, I think when they've overdubbed the voices at some points, they use the closer mic, which gives an intimate sound to the voice in a couple of dramatic moments. It's kind of interesting, some of the sound choices that were made. So and overall, it's good. So sound design, 8 out of 10. Um, music, I give the music an 8 out of 10. It is uh, it is a John Williams score. I think the score comes off better than Force Awakens for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that the movie is designed to allow the score to speak more. So the score is doing more work, and therefore it feels like a higher quality score. The Force Awakens also had a lot of very, very quick action scenes where the, you know, the music that was created to accompany it was just some, um, you know, just some callback music. You know, some of the themes that we've heard um, in the past from Star Wars to kind of keep the excitement going as like the Millennium Falcon crashed. In this case, there's a lot more drama moments where you really get to hear John Williams do some new and original composition. It's very interesting. Um, of course, you hear the familiar things from Star Wars that you've heard before, but this actually sounds like a much more original score than The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens sounded kind of phoned in from John Williams, and the new parts to it were often really not memorable. Now, this one doesn't have a whole lot of memorable stuff to it, but it was highly effective. I could definitely say that um, all of the orchestration, all of the um, all of the techniques that he used were very effective in the context of the movie. So it, to me, it gets an eight out of 10 for sure. Um, even if it's not, you know, one of his more memorable scores. Next, let's move on to story. So the total for the production is eight and a quarter, 8.25. Let's go into story. A lot of the stuff I talked about in other videos, so I'm going to go through it quickly. Setting, I give it a two out of 10. Um, the reason it's not a one out of 10 is the setting is there. One out of 10 would be, there's really no appreciable kind of setting or it's like bizarro or it's unintentionally makes no sense. Um, but we upend all the points of Star Wars that make Star Wars Star Wars. The nature of good and evil, the force, how you learn the force, the dark side, light side, all that stuff goes out, cont contest between good and evil, and we have it replaced with a nihilistic view of the setting. Um, we have preachy politics that are kind of kind of shoved in there, um, selling to both sides and um, you know this sort of thing on the casino planet. Uh, the view of the force of superpowers is continued from the previous movie. I don't like that. It doesn't actually answer any questions about the setting either. The two and a half hour movie doesn't take any time to explain what the heck the First Order is or why the Resistance is so undermanned and underpowered or why nobody's bothering to fight the First Order or anything like that. So there's no answering, there's no exposition of, uh, of the setting at all. And then there's some significant rule changes, of course, the hyperspace through the enemy ships, which you've never seen before. That rule change actually has an effect on how you perceive the entire setting and all the other movies. Like, why not just hyperspace into the Death Star and blow it up, right? And uh, then some odd force powers here and there, you know, like the, the continuing of the, you know, we have the link up between Kylo and, and Rey. It's a little odd. Just things we haven't seen before. Um, I will say that at least there's a couple new things with the setting as far as things go. I don't know, maybe you could give him credit for that, but to me it's like it's not so much new as it's an attempt to destroy the old. So I give the setting a 2 out of 10. Um, characters I give a 3 out of 10, so very slightly better score. This is still a significant failure. Um, there's a constant debasement and humiliation of every male character. I didn't mention this in the previous video, but they turn Poe into an incompetent moron who uh, suffers because he just doesn't trust the women to do 
all the all the thinking and work. And of course, the leaders don't make any sense. They're incredibly annoying, um, Admiral Holdo or whoever. And the entire contrivance and conflict between them could have been avoided if, like a normal military leader, she communicated and del she communicated the plan and delegated actions to her subordinates, like you would normally do. The entire stupid plot would be avoided. So uh, all the new characters are very shallow and annoying. Rose Tico, one of the most annoying, like Jar Jar level. Not, I don't know if she's Jar Jar level annoying. To me, she was very cringy and annoying. Same thing with Hold Holdo. So all the new characters were very annoying. Um, you know, the constant dressing down of males uh, was not so good. And then, of course, the change of Luke Skywalker to being portrayed as a nihilistic loser is in conflict with his character and everything that's come beforehand. Uh, I will say, though, that the dynamic between Rey and Kylo is actually pretty interesting. That's probably the best thing I could say about the characters is that uh, Adam Driver does a really good job as an actor. And actually, Daisy Ridley, I think, does a pretty good job acting in this. Um, and their scenes together, I think, are are some of the actual the only actual pieces of drama in the entire movie that felt like they had any kind of weight to them or any interest or I wanted to see how they resolved in any kind of way. Uh, Mark Hamill, of course, is acting very well in this as well. And so his acting quality is very high, even if the portrayal of his character due to the writing is actually very low. And the rest of the cast is filled out by cringy characters. Another thing I noticed is that there is almost no portrayal. This might be part of aesthetics, but there's no portrayal of female beauty, of traditional female beauty in the um, in the entire movie. Maybe with the exception of Rey, she's the only character who looks like a female, but even she, you know, her body's minimized. You have Holdo who has purple hair. You have, um, you have this bridge officer who has her hair and these weird little things on her head that just make her look really silly. Um, every female character is draped or just, uh, altered in a way that you don't really get to appreciate any kind of beauty, which is at, at extreme odds compared to previous Star Wars movies, this first six where there's always beautiful, you know, Leia looks beautiful or, um, Padme looks beautiful. You have an, a sense that there's beauty coming from the female form. You don't get that. I guess probably an aesthetic thing, but there you go. Um, so characters are three out of 10 because of just how awful it was to see things done to them. Plot, I give the plot a three out of 10. Like there is a plot, but the plot makes no sense. So the first thing that happens, they set up a rule. So whenever you create an exposition for a plot and a main plot goal, you set up rules for how you can achieve it. So the rules are we can't hyperspace away and we're running out of fuel. So we have to figure out how to get away from the first order before we run out of fuel. So the solution to this is, well, we got to disable their tracker. And we well, the way we're going to do that is we need to go get a code breaker. So they hyperspace away to go get a code breaker. And only at the end of the movie do they ever try to throw anything in to explain that little thing. It's like if they can track you through hyperspace, don't you think they would want to follow a ship that just hyperspaced away? And if they weren't going to follow a ship that hyperspaced away, everyone could just hyperspace in a different direction. You immediately go, well, that the rule set doesn't make sense right away. It breaks its own rules. You have this 40 minute stupid subplot that goes nowhere with the um, with the casino planet that's just there to kind of preach at you about war. And then, of course, um, it just all goes for naught. You get communicated at the end and it ends up being completely pointless. Um, it's a it's a <laughs> it's just a really, really bad sequence in my opinion. It, and it feels bad the whole way through. They freed the horses, but not the children. I talked about that before. Each plot point has a contrivance that's pulled out beforehand. It's like, oh, we'll get a code breaker. Okay. But we're running away from the first order. It's like, well, hyperspace away to get him. Let's break the rules. Um, okay. Well, we're going to, we're going to get on our transports and get out of the cruiser. It's like, won't they just shoot us? We have cloaking devices. And it's like the code breaker broke the cloaking devices. Everything has like some little contrivance that it, that's just introduced right before you have a plot point. It's terribly done. Um, so it's one of the worst plots, I think, in the Star Wars franchise. Possibly, it's at least on par with the badness of, of Force Awakens. It does have a setup that it eventually follows through with. Force Awakens has a setup that it just changes what it's doing halfway through, but it's still a pretty bad plot. I think the only kind of interesting plot is kind of the very, very thin plot that revolves around Kylo and his conflict with um, Snoke and with Rey. Um, it's very, very thin. It's mostly just about character drama. It's an excuse to have them talk to each other, um, but that that part, I guess, their story between between them and that character drama is a very slightly interesting plot. So three out of ten. 
Um, that leaves the story score at 2.66 out of 10. That is abysmally bad. Now I'm going to talk about general effect. This is just all the things put together. How did it really come off? And I give the general effect a 5 out of 10. That's a high F. Why is it not a low F? Well, I have to admit that the movie was actually very effective in certain ways that I just really didn't expect it to be. The first time I watched it in theaters, it genuinely gave me weird dreams and bad dreams, and it felt like a dream of Star Wars in a very perverse and strange way. I have to say that that was a very effective treatment, even if I didn't like the outcome of the movie. Even if I didn't like the cringy dialogue, for some some reason, the way the whole thing was constructed and put together had a very weird effect on me, um, and it would be doing a disservice to the production of the movie to say that it didn't. Um, I found myself more interested in the character drama the second time around. I don't really know why. I think just because I had no emotional attachment to anything and I had no expectations, uh, I was able to see that there was a little bit more story there between Kylo and Rey and a little bit more interest between them and what they were wanting out of the entire I don't know, the entire story, what their goals were. And I will say it was at the very least one of the, it is the most unique Star Wars movie. So that general effect could be higher or lower. I think the bad parts of it take enough away that it's still a five out of 10, but I have to give it credit for really doing something weird and uh, in some ways special, even if it's not the kind of special that I would actually want a Star Wars movie to be. This would be like a weird, like if it was an alternate reality, like an alternate reality Star Wars film, it would be actually very interesting to watch. Uh, but I think because they put it in there as like a mainline film, um, it kind of pollutes the whole thing. So anyway, uh, it would still be a terrible plot, by the way, if it was an alternate reality. Plot would still be bad. So 5 out of 10, that leaves the total score at 5.3 out of 10. So if you compare that to Force Awakens, Force Awakens was a 5.01 out of 10. It was 5 out of 10. This is a 5.3 out of 10. The Last Jedi is the superior movie because of its superior technical qualities and its, in, for me, its better general effect. But the story was just as bad for both movies. And I think for fans, it's easy to understand why this one's hated because of the treatment of the characters. The the treatment of the characters in Force Awakens was bad, but it was far worse in The Last Jedi, and they treated the entire universe just as badly, and they treated The Force Awakens badly too. So um, anyway, thanks so much, guys. Um, leave me your thoughts down below about any of these points, like what you thought about the aesthetics or any little story points. Give me your scores if you want, and uh, just compare them to mine, and I'd, I'd be interested to know you know, if you came at a different score, if you liked the movie. You know, give me some reasons why you liked it, and I'll see you guys next time. You guys know I write books, so I do have a couple books that are out. City of Silver, my little short fantasy novel. This is the newest one. And uh, Eyes in the Walls, this one just came out. This is straight horror. Uh, this is a very interesting one, so uh, please consider please consider getting this one. If you want to get all my books, this one has 10 of them in it and one giant volume. You can get this through the end of, uh, end of December here, Fantasy Christmas Spectacular. 2019. Make sure you join my mailing list and I actually will give you a free book if you join my mailing list. dvspress.com slash list and I'll see you guys next time.